Hey, welcome back everybody. Great to see you on this Thursday out there. Hope we're all having a wonderful week here leading up to the holiday going into early next week. And we've got a pretty big storm system we've got to talk about in today's video that is really already beginning for some folks out west and will continue to work east across the country going into our Christmas and likely also kind of be a tone setter for the new year. And we'll discuss that and what kind of changes we could see going into 2024 later on in the video. Um, but before that, I would like to ask if you haven't already subscribed, please definitely consider doing so. We're trying to get to 4,000 here uh, by the end of the year, and we're getting super close. Only need about 100, 120 more of you. Uh, so again, we'd be uh, very honored to have you join us aboard here. And if you like the video, also make sure to hit that like button and comment. Let me know where you're watching from. Uh, I will be discussing weather out on the West Coast today, which normally I don't do. So if you are watching out West, uh, definitely uh, let me know. It'd be cool to see. Uh, with all that said, though, let's go ahead and get started by jumping into to our satellite imagery on this Thursday. And you'll notice right now, uh, relatively speaking, things are pretty quiet for most folks across the lower 48. Uh, now just off screen here, you'll notice we do have some precipitation uh, kind of working up into parts of California, and that is associated uh, with a big low pressure system just off the coast, and that is going to be a part of our next storm system here uh, going through this weekend and into early next week. Now, as we jump on over and take a look at our current radar imagery, as well as uh, kind of those watches, warnings, and advisories out there, you'll notice uh, most of the active weather right now is currently in the plains, as well as, again, back out west, especially in SoCal, uh, where we've got some of those flash flood watches and uh, even, you know, a pretty good stream of moisture coming ashore here just north of the Los Angeles metro there. Uh, so definitely good to see rain in this part of the country. Unfortunately, though, you don't want to get too much of it at once, and we're going to likely, unfortunately, be dealing with that here uh, as we go through the next couple of days. Uh, now, looking back east, we still have flood advisories and warnings from that leftover um, flooding from this past uh, weekend's nor'easter that moved on through. Um, so, again, definitely make sure that you're still being cautious out there on some of those roadways that are close to those uh, creeks and streams that might still even be out of their banks. Alrighty, let's go ahead and start here, and uh, what I'm going to first of all show you is where all of our energy is in the atmosphere currently, and then we're going to take a look at where it's going, and then we'll dive in region by region uh, with this storm system and take a look at uh, who's going to see rain, who's going to see some Christmas snow, and uh, then we'll you know total up all of those amounts of rain and snow, and then we'll end the video off here by looking at the long range and what is shaping up to be a pretty active start to 2024. Alrighty, so uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Again, our first piece of energy is this big old bowling ball looking thing you see uh, just off the coast of California. This is a piece of uh, low pressure that's just kind of been meandering off the coastline for a little bit. You'll notice though, uh, as I move this ahead into time, this eventually is going to work into the desert southwest and eventually eject into the Great Plains. Now, as that is happening, you'll notice we do have some troughing or a piece of cold air back off towards uh, Alaska. This is also going to work into the country through the Pacific Northwest, and eventually these two pieces of energy are going to combine over the northern Great Plains and going to lead to a pretty substantial snowstorm uh, just in time before Christmas. So as we move this ahead, again, you'll notice these two pieces of energy kind of work into the country at the same time here. Here's that cold northern piece, and here's that um, tropical, more uh, wet piece of energy, if you will, moving into the southern sections of California, while again the cold energy moving in towards the Pacific Northwest. Now as I continue to move this ahead into time, you'll notice by the time we get into Christmas Eve here, uh, both of these pieces of energy kind of tangle up with each other, and then you've got a supply of cold air on one side and a supply of moisture on the other. Uh, those two, generally when they meet, obviously means we're going to see some winter weather, and we definitely will here through sections of the Rockies and again, even outside of the mountains into parts of the Great Plains. Now, as I move this further ahead into time, eventually that same storm system continues to kind of meander a little bit <clears throat> over the country, but continuing to work eastbound. Eventually, uh, the days after Christmas, going past the Mississippi River into the Ohio River Valley and likely bringing some precipitation with it. And then finally, on the backside, as it moves away, uh, we've got some cold air trying to work on into the East Coast, and that could be that tone setter for the start of January. Uh, and maybe this is followed up by another storm system that interacts with that cold air. We'll definitely have to keep posted and watch the trends there in the long run. 
All right, so I'm going to start in the West Coast, which again, normally I do not cover the weather out West, but I figured, um, you know, I'm in a holly jolly mood, if you will, um, and I probably should, uh, you know, give you folks the same information I give to everyone in the East. So let's go ahead and dive into it uh, with this storm system. Uh, again, through this afternoon, it's going to be quite rainy through much of Southern California, specifically down here uh, into the Los Angeles metro and just north of LA, uh, where we're having a pretty good stream of moisture inland, helping to kind of um, hit those mountains and wring out as much of that precipitable water as we can. Now, going further into this afternoon, that rain continues, and also uh, going into this evening kind of works up the coastline a little bit. This is about 7 o'clock tonight local time. Uh, and you'll notice, again, that rain moving up into uh, even sections of the bay towards um, San Francisco or once we get about the time the sun is going down. Now, continuing into the overnight, we get then another plume of moisture by the time we're getting into the very early morning hours of tomorrow, this time likely getting off up towards um, sections of Arizona and um, southeastern uh, California as well, kind of down into the deserts, seeing some of this rain begin to work on in, and that will bring with it a bit of a flash flooding concern as well. Now, during the same time period, again, as this storm system is moving ashore, we also have more energy moving ashore into the Pacific Northwest. Uh, so you'll notice up there we're going to get some uh, rain for most people, but definitely snow in those higher elevations of uh, Washington State and up into the Cascades, seeing uh, pretty good helping of snow out of this. And we'll take a look at the totals here later on into the video. Uh, again, though, this is early tomorrow morning is when both of these pieces of energy are kind of moving in at the same time. And that's going to lead to a very wet afternoon tomorrow through much of Southern California and Arizona. Uh, again, it's not many days of the year we see rain in this part of the country, so uh, maybe enjoy it. Uh, make sure you got your plants out there ready to kind of capture as much of this water as they can here through the southern deserts of the United States. Now, uh, going into tomorrow evening and into the overnight, that rain shield continues to work east into Arizona, uh, bringing plenty of rainfall and even some heavy mountain snow there in the higher terrains of central Arizona and even some of the higher terrains of southern uh, California getting in on that snow as well. Now, I'm continuing to move this through uh, the overnight Friday and into the early morning hours of Saturday the 23rd. You'll notice we've got all-out snow, uh, again, through much of the Rockies here from the Four Corners regions, even up into portions of Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming, getting in on some of that snow as well. Um, sorry, it looks like I just had a picture fall over behind me. Um, anyway, um, so that's as far out as this model goes. Um, sorry about that distraction. Uh, Taking a look at the flooding potential here out of the storm system, though, again, today we do have a pretty good risk of uh, the chance of um, flooding here through Southern California. In fact, we've got a moderate risk, which uh, is the second highest level that we can have, um, again, for that chance of some flash flooding here uh, into the uh, western sections of the Los Angeles metro and just north of there here along the coastline. Uh, but even that slight and marginal risk um, stretch pretty far inland. Uh, throughout the um, afternoon today and even into this evening. So make sure you have a way to get those watches and warnings. And again, we already have flood watches up for a big section here of Southern California. Now, as we move this into tomorrow, uh, that threat of excessive rainfall then shifts off towards um, Southern California, Southern or in Central Arizona as well. Um, so again, a pretty good chance of some flash flooding tomorrow as well. And the soils out here just aren't really built to take a lot of rain at once. It's very dry and when the water hits it, uh, it doesn't immediately absorb. Uh, that's kind of why we uh, run into those flooding problems. Even if it's not a ton of rain, it's still enough to cause problems out here in this part of the country. Alrighty, that's the West Coast. Let's take a look now at our friends here east of the Rockies. And uh, as I looked at earlier on radar, we're already seeing some showers this afternoon uh, and this morning here into central parts of the country from Texas up through Oklahoma and Kansas and even some sprinkles uh, moving on up through Missouri and Illinois this afternoon. Um, now that will be a pretty common theme I think throughout today today and um, even into overnight as some of that precipitation continues to ramp up getting into uh, eastern Kansas, eastern Oklahoma, eastern Texas and again kind of through the Ozarks and uh, up through Missouri as well, seeing some rain, albeit not an insane amount of rain, but definitely enough it's worth mentioning <clears throat> throughout the overnight tonight and even into early Friday. Uh, now, as we move this ahead later on into Friday afternoon, that rain then continues to work on up through the Ohio River Valley, uh, here through cities like St. Louis, Indianapolis, Chicago, um, Cincinnati, Louisville, a lot of these other kind of surrounding areas could see some showers throughout the day tomorrow and even into our overnight on Friday. 
And then by the time we're waking up on Saturday, as far out as this model goes, again, some rain still lingering through the Ohio River Valley, but maybe even some snow showers mixing in there uh, through the interior northeast. Can't roll out that um, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so still relatively quiet over the next couple of days, but definitely um, some rain to still watch out for. All right, let's time out the rest of the storm system here uh, nationwide, and then uh, we will kind of zoom in on those snowfall totals and rainfall totals as a whole, and then again end out the video talking about that pattern change going into the new year. All right, so moving this ahead, uh, kind of where we left off going into our Saturday, again, we've got widespread rain and snow out west, uh, while some more scattered rain here through the Ohio River Valley. Now, moving this further ahead into our Saturday afternoon, you'll notice that low pressure kind of begins to get its act together a little bit more overnight Saturday and going into our Christmas Eve, just over kind of the um, western Great Plains here around the Denver metro. Now, as this is ongoing, expecting still some widespread snow showers on the backside, but on the front side here, you'll notice this low kind of begins to tap in to more of that Gulf moisture, and that is going to help to allow for some precipitation to begin to unfold here uh, in more heavy quantities than maybe we're seeing today out through the southern Great Plains, and can't even roll out some lightning as well and some thunderstorms um, there, uh, excuse me, there through parts of Texas, Oklahoma, and Louisiana. Now, as we're going into our morning and afternoon hours of Christmas Eve itself, you'll notice uh, we've got an all-out storm here with very heavy snowfall on the backside through uh, western Dakotas and into western Nebraska, and again, a shield of rain on the front side through Texas, Louisiana, up the Mississippi River Valley, as far, no uh, excuse me, as far north as Minnesota. Um, and with this, we're going to see a lot of warm air surge northward. Notice these kind of red um, lines on your map and how they're kind of being kinked upward. Now that indicates to me we're getting very strong flow out of the south. And with that, a lot of very warm, moist air. Um, so that uh, above freezing line is, again, going to get all the way up towards Canada. You'll notice the first blue line you see on the map uh, isn't all the way up till pretty far past um, Wisconsin and Michigan there. So very anomalously warm temperatures and that being helped by the strong flow from the storm system out of the south. Now again, going through the afternoon of Christmas Eve and into the evening, uh, going into about, excuse me, again, about 6, 7, 8, 9 o'clock, uh, the 24th that night, still very heavy rain falling through the Mississippi River Valley and uh, still dealing with that snow on the backside as well, back through South Dakota and Nebraska, getting in on very festive snow time. Uh, they are just in time for Santa to kind of uh, work his way on in. Now, by the time we're waking up Christmas morning, um, that rain shield will continue to slowly work off towards the east, now getting kind of into the southeast through Alabama, Georgia, and even close to the Carolinas, but still raining up here into sections of the Midwest, and also still snowing back here towards Nebraska and South Dakota. Now, this storm system is going to kind of, um, I don't want to say stall out, but meander at least a little bit from the 24th kind of through the 26th right over the heart of the country. And you'll notice as I move this ahead further into the day on Christmas itself and into the 26th, the center of low pressure still hanging over kind of that Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, Kansas area, continuing to bring snow showers on the backside and continuing to bring warm, moist, kind of rainy um, precipitation on the front side. Um, so this thing's going to disrupt us for a while, and unfortunately this is a very busy travel time, so uh, might be traveling in the rain, maybe even some thunderstorms down near the Gulf, and definitely some snow back into the Great Plains. Now, luckily by the time we hit the 27th, uh, this storm system finally kind of gets kicked on out of here, but still bringing rain uh, through much of the first half of the week of Christmas itself. So that Monday through what you're seeing here is that Thursday, we still have rain ongoing, um, through much of the eastern half of the country, although clearing out. Uh, now, after that, you'll notice uh, the models kind of go a little haywire, and we've got a little bit of craziness on going uh, back out towards the northeast. But one thing I do want you to notice here that I think is becoming more and more likely, uh, all those blue isobars that were trapped all the way up into Canada now kind of are flooding back down south and covering much of the east coast, going towards those last couple days of December. Um, I think this storm definitely has a pretty good shot at, again, being that tone setter towards the new year, bringing cold air in uh, and uh, maybe even kind of establishing more of a connection to that cold air in the long run. Now, as for all of the snow and craziness you're seeing unfold in the northeast, just kind of ignore that for now. we got plenty of time to monitor uh, exactly what the storm is going to do and the models are all over the place there. But again, just kind of notice um, the storm meanders for a while, but once it finally gets kicked off towards the east, I think some cooler air definitely tries to surge on in behind it. 
And again, that could set up shop for whatever next storm moves on through to potentially bring some wintry weather. Now, before we get there, though, we've got a big warm stretch to get through. Uh, this is this afternoon. You'll notice almost the entire country is... Uh, well above average for what we should be this time of year from the west coast all the way through the Ohio River Valley. Now still holding on to some cooler temperatures along the immediate east coast, but outside of there, uh, very warm weather for what we would expect during the middle and end of December. And all that warm weather is going to continue to take over the country going into uh, the days leading up to Christmas. This is the uh, afternoon of December 23rd, this Saturday. And you'll notice a big chunk of the middle of the country well above average, even getting near 20 to 30 degrees above average up here into the northern Great Plains. So if your average high this time of the year is 30, it could be up near uh, 55, 60 uh, for a lot of folks up here uh, from Iowa, Minnesota, and the Dakotas. Now, uh, as we go into Christmas Day itself, again, that warm air continues to surge northward ahead of that storm system. Again, getting 30, maybe even 35 degrees above what we should be for Christmas for a lot of folks here up into the Great Plains. And that continues through early next week before eventually, again, some signs that maybe cold air works back in on the backside of that storm system just in time to start off the new year. And uh, again, we'll definitely monitor that if that is the case and it hangs around. Uh, could definitely see some wintry weather there to start January. Alrighty, so now that we've kind of talked about that storm system, timed it out a little bit, let's take a look at some snowfall totals now through um, the kind of afternoon and evening of Christmas Day itself, and even going into the morning hours of the 26th. Alright, so again, I think the Cascades here, and even all the way down into Oregon, these higher terrains, plenty of snow on the way, those highest peaks, more than a foot of snow, likely. Uh, again, this is going to be <clears throat> very elevation dependent, so if you're uh, at a kind of elevation that normally gets a lot of snow in this part of the country, then expect some more here uh, going just in time for Christmas and very likely to see a white Christmas in this area as well. Uh, same story back here towards Idaho, Montana, and into parts of northern Utah and western Wyoming there. Uh, very elevation dependent, but those higher elevations likely to get at least a couple inches of snow here. And uh, along those ridge tops, maybe even half a foot to a foot of snow uh, in this part of the country. Now moving this south a little bit into the desert southwest, uh, the higher terrains of the Sierra Nevada is going to see some snow here over the next couple of days, and we actually do have uh, winter storm warnings up for this part of the country as well due to this uh, snow that is going to move on in over the uh, next 48 to 72 hours. Overall totals, I think one to three inches in those kind of medium elevations, three to five in the higher, and right on the peaks themselves, half a foot to a foot of snow. Not out of the question, and same story back here towards the higher elevations of Arizona and up towards Utah, uh, going to see a pretty good helping of snow, and as I've been saying, going to be very elevation dependent, so just kind of know your general area and uh, uh, the general height that you are in whatever mountain chain you might be living in. All right, moving this up kind of uh, towards the northern Great Plains, this is where it uh, won't be so dependent on whether you're in the mountains or not, as a lot of folks here in western South Dakota and Nebraska are going to get a good helping of snow over that uh, period from the 24th through really the days even after Christmas as the storm system uh, hangs around a little bit. Three to five inches of snow looks pretty likely through much of this area, with one to three inches uh, a little more likely there through northern and central South Dakota and into central Nebraska. Now taking a look here at the Southern Great Plains, same story, I think uh, here into western Kansas and even into much of eastern Colorado, a good helping of snow on the way, three to five inches for a lot of folks, one to three inches, um, also going to be pretty widespread here through a big section um, of the Central Plains here. So again, maybe uh, I think the chances of a white Christmas looking pretty likely out here, uh, definitely maybe robbing some of that snow and warmth from us in the east, but that's okay. Uh, we'll uh, pro uh, hopefully get it back here going later on into the Christmas, or excuse me, later on into the winter. All right. Um, rainfall, again, going to be a big part of this storm as well that we need to talk about. And I think uh, the real winters are going to be kind of out here in the Central Plains and through the Southeast and Mid-Atlantic, where through uh, really, this time next week, a good helping of rain on the way. Uh, widespread 1 to 3 inches, isolated spots 3 to 5 inches here, especially kind of, I think, uh, into the Appalachia chain from uh, northeast Georgia through upstate South Carolina and into uh, North Carolina and Virginia there. Likely to see some pretty good amounts of rain and also another uh, kind of big spot here near the Texarkana area and through the coastal Carolinas as well. Likely to get a little bit more rain than maybe some surrounding neighbors. All right, so now that we talked about uh, all that storm system, let's take a quick sneak peek at the start of the new year and what kind of pattern change could be in store. 
Uh, now, what you're currently looking at on this map here is um, our troughing and ridging that we talk about so often. Uh, this area of blue and this kind of enclosed circle here is our current storm system that will, again, eventually work on through uh, for Christmas. And now, this is uh, overnight Christmas itself. As we move this head into the days following, you'll notice that storm system, again, slowly but surely kind of works off towards the east. And I think likely behind it, again, a surge of some cold air on the back side going into the last couple days of December and to start the new year. Uh, now, after that, there are some signs that maybe another storm system kind of tries to work on in, uh, indicated by this blue on your map. Once again, kind of a southern slider here or just a storm that kind of comes in through Southern California and rides the Gulf of Mexico um, on the backside of that cold air. Now, should that happen, we have got the shot, maybe not a super high chance, but a chance nonetheless, that maybe some kind of wintry weather unfolds here in the central part of the country. Um, now, again, I don't want to tell you that this is absolutely going to happen, but nonetheless, the models are indicating that there is a better shot for wintry weather to start January. And uh, this can be seen in a couple ways. One, we've got this very impressive southern storm track, very um, conducive for wintry weather in the east. Uh, and also, notice how these blue colors in this troughing extend all the way up towards Greenland and work down into the country. That tells me we've actually got a bit of a connection of cold air here. Uh, this won't be just leftover chilly weather. Uh, we could very easily have um, well below average temperatures trying to move southward out of uh, eastern Canada there going into early January. Uh, now, I do also want to mention a lot of the times in the models, they're a little early to these general ideas. So this is about 10 days away. Um, this could be more like 10 to 15 days away, just given how the models sometimes kind of like to delay this arrival of cold air. Uh, but nonetheless, we've got the signs here of a change back to more of a wintry pattern through much of the eastern half of the country going into the new year. Now, again, going into Christmas, very warm temperatures for just about everyone. You'll notice that here on your map uh, through really almost all of North America going to be well above average uh, just in time for Christmas. Now, again, as we go after that closer towards the new year, some of that blue once again works back into the southeast and eventually going through the first week of January, much of the east coast is back to below average temperatures as cooler air once again tries to take over the continental United States. And as I've already mentioned, should we still have an active southern jet stream here, uh, like we've seen so far through uh, really all of December, we could very well uh, get some kind of wintry precipitation uh, somewhere um, from the Great Plains through the Ohio River Valley, somewhere in the southeast, northeast, who really knows, uh, could be anywhere. Just know that the pattern is getting more favorable. Uh, Climate Prediction Center here agrees 8 to 14 days out, likely um, below average temperatures beginning to work back on through the southeastern United States. Uh, still above average back out west and likely through the northeast, but slowly but surely, uh, I think this will slowly change to more and more blue uh, through much of the eastern half of the country. Alrighty, so again, a lot of information in this video from that current storm system that will continue to work on east and bring some impacts for Christmas. Also, uh, the chance of a bit of a pattern change going into the start of 2024. Uh, so again, definitely a lot to monitor here. And uh, as I said earlier, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely consider doing so and comment. Let me know where you're watching from and uh, also tell me if you've got any exciting Christmas plans out there. Personally, I'll be going back home uh, to South Carolina for a week or so. Very excited to see my family. And I'll talk about that a little more in a couple days because it will kind of impact the video schedule a little bit um, likely. And I'll discuss that here going into um, tomorrow and Saturday. With that said, though, I hope you have a great rest of your Thursday out there and I'll see you all tomorrow.